Hola. Hola. Bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Bienvenidos. This week we are doing an early intermediate class, but it's about the subjunctive. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hatsu. And would you believe that we have the question that comes from Antonio Graciosi? Antonio okay. Graciosi. Is it oh, Italian? Graciosi. Graciosi. Uh, Graciosi. Okay. Got to be Italian, Antonio. I okay. like the surname. Lovely, isn't it? Sounds, Sounds a bit funny. Very happy. <laughs> very happy. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you read. Oh, a minute. Wait a minute. Before you read it. So, we're going to do about the subjunctive. Because I'm, I'm forget that well, this is the introduction. This is just the introduction, Cynthia. Oh, yes. And, entonces. And, you know, you told me to read it. I was just going to uh -huh. read it. <laughs> we will. We'll get round to it. Pero primero, nos vemos en la segunda parte. Vale, Cintia, quiere leer su pregunta. Ok. Gordon, perdón por molestarte. Sé que debes recibir muchas preguntas por correo electrónico. Si me pudieras responder, se lo agradecería mucho. Esta es mi pregunta. ¿Se aplican las mismas reglas para usar el subjuntivo cuando se hace una pregunta? Por ejemplo, ¿Is it necessary for him to go to the meeting? ¿Es necesario que él venga a la reunión? Did you want him to go to the meeting? ¿Quieres o querías, querías no? que él vaya a la reunión o que fuera a la uh -huh. reunión? Eh, sé de su libro sobre el subjuntivo que hay una excepción cuando se hacen preguntas. Eh, ¿hay, otra, ¿Hay otras explicaciones? Me encantan sus vídeos, quizá pueda hacer... Quizá puedan hacer otros vídeos sobre este tema. Ok. So, Antonio is talking about two, two things here. Yeah? He's talking about the exception to the subjunctive with a question. Yes. Yeah? And what he's referring to is the when, cuando exception. Ok. Yeah? Right. So we've got... And the reason that we're doing this in early intermediate is because... This is when the subjunctive starts. It oh doesn't start God, later on. I'm rolling my <laughs> sleeves rolling up. Sleeves. We're in action now. Subjunctive. Okay. <laughs> so let's just clear up the, uh, the, the cuando exception. Because what, what he's referring to is if you ask a question, mm -hmm. do you need the subjunctive or not? Yes. Okay. Do you need the subjunctive? In these questions, before you move on to the cuando, yeah. you do need the, sub the, the subjunctive. Absolutely. Uh, so that, the first question was, uh, is it necessary for him to go to the meeting? Es necesario que trigger. Es necesario que vaya a la reunión. So yes, we still have the trigger. Sure. And then the second one would be, did you want him to go to the meeting? So that would be, querías que trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Querías que fuese fuera fuese a la reunión. Mm -hmm. See. So yes, the, the when there's a trigger, you would need the subjunctive. Okay. And now. So. What, I, what I'm going to do is, I, I just want to help you to understand what this exception is, but it's not about the fact that it's a question and therefore it creates the exception because it's a question. It's about the word cuando. Okay, so for example, uh, subjunctive. Cuando lleguemos, hablaremos de, del tema. Okay, so when we arrive, we'll talk about that subject. That's the subjunctive trigger for cuando. Mm -hmm. When is it used? It's used when we're talking about a when up and coming that hasn't happened yet. Okay? The other cuando is when we're just saying when always. Cuando llegamos, siempre hablamos de ese tema. Yeah? So that's a cuando of always. That doesn't use any subjunctive at all. It's only when we're using a when up and coming. And then the exception, the bizarre thing is that when we ask a when question, even though it's up and coming, we don't use the subjunctive. Cuando te vas. Yeah? Not cuando te vayas. That's not, that's not a question. That's a statement about, hey, when you go. Yes. Yeah? When you use the subjunctive, you need something else. Okay. So, for example, 
When you say, when, when do you go? That's a question in itself. Cuando te vas? Okay. Mm -hmm. But then if I use a subjunctive, it would be something like, when you go, and then there would be something else. Yeah, because yeah. if not, the sentence is not complete. When you go, can you let me know? Or mm -hmm. when you go, can you call me? When you go, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you need something else. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. the when plus something in the future that is going to happen. You don't know when, but it's going to happen. When and future event is the, the subjunctive. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. But with something else. Yeah. So the, the sentence wouldn't be finished with when you go. Mm -hmm. So that's the that that weird little thing. You're asking a question. You, you're using cuando, and you're talking about a future event. But because it's a question, you're not using the subjunctive. The ones that Antonio has put in in here, what even though the questions, it doesn't it doesn't matter. What's happened is that a trigger has been fired off, as Cynthia rightly said. So the first one, what was the what was the statement? Um, it was, is it necessary? for him to go to the meeting. Okay, so in our WUPA, you know, that, that acronym that we've created, that's an obligation sentence. Is it necessary? Must he? Yeah, that's an obligation. And obligations create a trigger for the subjunctive. And the other one, I think it's the same, isn't Did it? Did you want him to go to the meeting? Another obligation, yeah. So when you get these obligations of must and want and it's important that and uh, es imprescindible que, all of those, they're obligations and the, it doesn't matter whether it's a question. So I could say to Cynthia, um, uh, quiero que él vaya. Uh -huh. ¿Vale? That's a statement. Or I could say, quieres que él vaya. Allí. Okay. Both both of them are going to have to be subjunctive because this is a this is a trigger and it's an obligation. Yeah, better you would better to say quieres que el vaya statement. Uh -huh. Quieres que el vaya question uh -huh. because you change the person there even though it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the example, uh -huh. for the sake of the example, quieres que vaya. Do you want him to go? Mm -hmm. Quieres que vaya. So that's a trigger because you want someone else to do something. Yeah. So that's a, a, a trigger. Or question, ¿Quieres que vaya? Do you want him to go? Mm -hmm. Still, you ask, it's, a, it's a trigger of somebody wanting somebody else to do it. Yeah. Even if it's a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The same applies to all of the, the Whooper family. You can make a statement or a question. Or, or negative sentence. Yeah. No quieres que vaya. Mm -hmm. No quieres que vaya. You don't want him to go. Don't you want him to go? So, still a trigger. Yeah, because sure. we have the trigger... Sure. Tú quieres que somebody else. So it doesn't really matter which family you're in of subjunctive, whether it's a question or whether it's a, uh, a statement. When you are triggering off the subjunctive, you've got to use the subjunctive. So the only, and, and the only thing that maybe Antonio is thinking about is the I situation. You know, when you say, hay un hombre que sabe arreglar coches. Statement. Okay. Question. Mm -hmm. Hay un hombre que sepa arreglar uh, coches. Subjunctive. Yes. And no hay nadie que sepa arreglar coches. So with I, I is a, a little family on its own. A little bit weird. <laughs> a little bit weird. But when you're asking the question with I, then the subjunctive gets fired off. And when you're saying there isn't anybody, that the subjunctive is fired off. It's only a statement about what there is, then you're not using the subjunctive. So probably that's what Antonio's got in his mind when he's thinking about these questions. The questions, being asked. Yeah? yes. Mm -hmm. I understand because sometimes, um, sometimes, for example, when we do commands, sometimes it is the subjunctive, sometimes it isn't, you know, with a negative, for example. Absolutely. Um, so I understand that sometimes, you know, um, but in, the, in the commands, it's not because of, it's a trigger. It's because the command is like subjunctive shape, yeah, and has nothing to do with triggers. Uh, in the rest of the cases, it will be with triggers. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. the the I one is a is a good one for another another class. Another class, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 
There you are, Antonio. So, so what happens is when you start looking at the subjunctive, you end up with subjunctivitis, and you and you start panicking because you see subjunctive everywhere. You don't know whether it needs it or not. Yeah. Invariably, you put it in even when it doesn't need it. Yeah. But that's good. That's fine. And then you rein it all back in until you get it, you know, running at the at the way that it should run. So, bien. Muy bien. We did a lot. Sorry, uh-huh. <laughs> I just interrupted you. We did a lot of subjunctive when we were doing the book club, yeah. uh, number one and number two, but particularly uh-huh. number one, because there was a lot of subjunctive coming up in the book when we were reading. Yeah. So if someone's interested in doing the, the book club, as a sure. you know, if you like reading books, um, mm-hmm. it's a little extra help, but mm-hmm. off you go, honey. You better see. Ahora. And now, a word from our sponsor. <sighs> Muchísimas gracias, Vika, de Rusia. De ¿no? Rusia. Qué bueno, <laughs> qué bueno. Okay, so what are we plugging this week? Well, this week we've talked about the subjunctive. And if you notice that we put this in early intermediate, that's just because you can't avoid the subjunctive. The longer you avoid it, the more difficult it becomes because you've formed bad habits. Okay with not using the subjunctive. So that's why you need to start early, even if it's just getting the basics. So what we've done is we've made um, a course for, it's called Subjunctive for Beginners, all right? And it it doesn't mean that you've got to be a beginner to do it. What it means is that's where you can start, okay? So it's a course that covers all of the present tense subjunctive up to the present perfect, okay? With haber. all of that's in there. We talk about I, we talk about uh, all of the families, whooper, the whole shebang. And that's available on Thinky Fix. So to find it, all you have to do is go on. At once, it's still going to hold you in good stead for later on when you have to start using it. Yeah. Yes, because mm-hmm. we use it every single day. It's not a tense that is, oh, well, we don't use it. Like some people would say, no, nah, just avoid it. You can't avoid it. Well, if you, you want can. to speak um, Spanish decently. You can avoid it. I mean, I've, I've had students who say, can I just speak Spanish without using the subjunctive? And I say, yes, of course you can. <laughs> of course you can. You'll just have a crap Spanish. <laughs> But, I mean, it's like saying, can I say English without using any prepositions? Yes, of course you can. <laughs> of course you can. And you'll really? sound like Tarzan. <laughs> yeah. Do I have to conjugate verbs? <laughs> yes, you do. But you don't have to if you don't want to. You know, it's one of I those, guess. like, can I leave out, can I leave out every, every other word when I'm speaking Spanish? Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. Whatever you, you fancy. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it, it'll just not sound very good. Yeah. So yeah, everything's permitted, but uh, nothing's allowed. So uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, what a contradiction! <laughs> Entonces, ah, chicos, eso es todo. Muchísimas gracias por estar con nosotros. <laughs> Y ahora nos vamos. Y nos vemos. Hasta luego, adiós. adiós.